Educational standards attempt to provide a definition of what students ought to know and what skills they should have acquired at each level or yearly grade. They are meant to be a point of reference for teacher planning and learning programs as well as student assessment. The Common Core Standard is one that is used in all but four states in America. Texas, Louisiana, Alaska, and Nebraska, as well as the territory of Puerto Rico, have opted not to use this standard, which raises the question of why. Indeed, some controversy exists as to whether this standard, or any standard, ought to be used in education, one being that it has been administrators developing it, rather than actual educators, which is akin to a lieutenant straight out of university thinking he can apply the book to the field. Some argue that Common Core stifles the very creativity it claims to foster. Standardizing all schooling does not allow healthy competition among schools, which prevents improvement in actual teaching strategies and techniques. One must indeed take issue with a standard that would omit a book crucial to develop critical and free thought like that of 1984 from a school curriculum, and even wonder if their true motivations for doing so. Perhaps Common Core is itself in part attempting to manifest that totalitarian dystopia that George Orwell warns us about, but more concerned with moving students who for a definition of a metal citizen who loves Big Brother and does not think beyond their checkbook or the soma like pharmaceutical drugs they pop to cope with such a stifling life as Common Core may truly be programming them for. Controversy aside, let us at least understand the standard better by unpacking it. Covering math and English language arts from kindergarten to grade 12, its influence in America is not remotely negligible. For the purpose of this unpacking, we shall focus on speaking and listening, for it is what we listen to that shapes us and our words reveal our inner state of being or the lack thereof. This is geared toward collaboration and comprehension. One notion is to intermittently speak about topics and to follow discussion rules that have been previously agreed upon, including critical and active listening, presentation of knowledge of ideas and what one knows. A variety of themes and topics may be used here, describing what is familiar to them, be they events, people, or places, utilizing teacher support prompts and the supply of added details. Some of this sounds appropriate, such as the use of 21st century skills including visual displays, virtual and augmented reality, media, and the resources that one may have at their disposal, and engage students like toys, assistive technology, virtual flashcards, and YouTube videos lacking in quality as compared to my own. Learning to speak so others can hear their thoughts, feelings, and ideas clearly and concisely. The pertinent verbiage found here is description, collaboration, comprehension, conversation, and listening. Although the concepts will depend on what themes are being used, be they botany, science, activities, society, dinosaurs, the senses, etc. As per the first example, students can describe the variety of plants, converse about their various uses, listen to each other's views, and collaborate toward having a deeper comprehension of the topic of botany. In such topics, it is likely that students will already have some knowledge through exposure to cartoons and parental guidance, if not from the realm of academia itself. It is up to the teacher to facilitate such skills as critical and active listening and thought, communication, collaboration, creativity, and that which is more important than skill in the development of the human being to self-actualize and love the world around them. The latter two are not inherently found in Common Core. However, these are things a teacher can and should always choose to implement regardless of the standard being used, if any at all. The creative aspect will come through projects designed artistically, whether with offline materials or through online or virtual mediums. Clearly, group work will foster the mindset of collaboration, critical and active listening, and an overall open mindset. The big idea in all of this is that students will learn how to speak and listen using English as a second language. Rather than just learning vocabulary and grammar, students will learn the finer aspects of communication, all of which are nonverbal. On top of speaking among themselves and listening to each other, public speaking skills can be acquired through class presentations. Active listening can be assessed through their ability to remember and adhere to rules set by the school and norms set by the teacher, as well as the information they're exposed to from the teacher or the variety of media resources they will be required to use in their personal research. Both formative and summative assessments can be used to gauge student achievement from simple questions that gauge student comprehension of the concepts or the necessity of new vocabulary and inclusion in the response to questions or descriptions of content. Summative assessments can be many, dioramas, puppet shows, video creation, show and tell, drawings, artistic cutouts, posters, or the answering of test questions or showcasing their knowledge through public speaking. Game-based learning can be implemented during offline or online activities such as Duck Duck Goose, where questions are posed to the goose, treasure hunts whereby objects can only be found by understanding the clues left for them, which include the new vocabulary, or replicas. 
was associated with the theme, a virtual online graphical text adventure game such as those I have created. Using botany as an example for the latter, students can have an escape room type adventure whereby they must name plants and their uses in order to proceed through each level. Those with varying levels of English can be accommodated by keeping text short and at their level of knowledge, aside from the new vocabulary they learned. To maintain a global mindset, things should include material from around the world, such as the many plants that grow naturally in different areas of the globe and the differing ways that cultures use them. The bottom line is that even if a standard has aspects or intentions to it that are nefarious, the well-intended educator can work with and around it to make it as appropriate as possible and to instill the best in their students. This is what I do with my own students. If you are a teacher, this is what you ought to do as well. In teaching critical thought, we must critically analyze the standards we use, if any, and adjust them according to what is possible 